What is Beltane? Well, Beltane was one of four Gallic seasonal festivals. Uh, there's three others, but Beltane is on the 1st of May. Historically, it was used to mark the beginning of the summer season, where livestock, like cows, animals, sheep, were driven to summer pastures. Rituals were held at that time to protect the animals from harm, both from natural and supernatural harm, and this involved the symbolic use of fire. So Beltane became associated with fire. There were also rituals to protect crops, dairy products and people, and to encourage growth. Uh, the fairies, or bad spirits, in the Celtic world were thought to be especially active at Beltane. And the goal of these Beltane rituals was to try to somehow keep these bad spirits away. These seemed to be remnants of pagan gods and nature spirits. Beltane was a springtime festival of optimism associated with fertility. From the late 18th century to the middle of the 20th century, many accounts of Beltane customs were recorded. So we do know uh, what our ancestors did at Beltane. These days we light bonfires Bonfires were a key part of the festival, not only in the old days, but also in the modern days. So they used to light fires, usually on a hill, and that's something that they've started to do again in Scotland and Ireland. They often rubbed wood together in order to make it somehow more powerful, uh, this is known as need firing. It was some kind of sacred fire that had a ritual attached to it. Wales also is part of the Celtic world, and they also had some kind of Beltane festival, although I don't know if they do anything these days. The flames of these fires were believed to guard against sickness, supernatural harm, and witchcraft. In the 19th century, cattle, cows basically, uh, were driven over flames or between two fires uh, as a good luck sign. And the people also jumped through fire for protection. When I say the Celtic world, I'm talking about Ireland, Scotland, Wales, and probably the Isle of Man as well. And there may still be traces of these festivals all around Scandinavia or Northern Europe generally. When the bonfire died down, people would cover themselves with its ashes and sprinkle it everywhere as a sign of good luck. They would take bits of the flame home. They would light torches from the bonfire, and they would be taken home and placed outside the house and used to relight the fire. From these rituals, it's clear that fire was seen to be somehow protective. Rituals were part of May Day or Midsummer customs in some parts of Britain and mainland Europe, particularly the North. Uh, one historian believed that the fire rituals were a kind of sympathetic magic to mimic the sun, to burn up and destroy all harmful influences. Food was cooked at the bonfire time as well. Uh, there was a dish involving lamb, and before that, a lamb was actually sacrificed. 
uh, butter, oatmeal, and milk was cooked. Some of the mixture poured on the ground as well. And everyone would have an oatmeal cake called a banach or Beltane banach. And that's still very common here. Not on the 1st of May, but just to eat oatmeal cakes. Each person would face the fire, break a bit of the oatmeal off, throw it over their shoulder and offer it to the spirit to protect their livestock, one for the horses, one for the sheep, and so on, so that the predators they might harm, uh, or the predators that might harm the livestock, uh, uh, would stay away, and afterwards they would drink some special drinks as well. Uh, there was also the May bush or May tree. Uh, that also was a very popular thing. It was decorated with flowers, ribbons, uh, eggshells, and everything else. And uh, it used to travel. They would take it through the streets, and it was looked upon. It was the oldest person's responsibility to decorate the tree, and the tree stayed up for the whole month of May. Kind of similar to Christmas trees, maybe. Um, uh, in parts of Southern Ireland, gold and silver uh, balls were made to be hung on May bushes. Sounds kind of familiar, doesn't it? The way we do things for Christmas. Uh, and then they were decorated by the neighborhood. People would dance around them. And of course, uh, that became known as the May pole. Um, in other parts of Europe. So it seems that around Ireland and Scotland, it, this tree was called the May bush. Uh, I'm not sure why they did that, but I think it might be because these particular bushes burn very well, so they were very good with fire. Um, yeah, customs of decorating trees and poles uh, was some kind of tree worship before Christianity anyway. Um, and they brought the blessings of a tree spirit. Uh, some people say that this Maybush custom came from Ireland to England. Uh, I don't know, because they had lucky and unlucky trees by region. Uh, so yeah, it's very interesting. And then that all became tied up with Easter as well. Um, but these practices were really to ward off the fairies because many people don't know that in Scotland and Ireland, fairies weren't these little harmless creatures with wings, like you see in books. Uh, fairies were big, strong creatures that you really didn't want to upset. They were sometimes much bigger than men were, and you could easily sit on their lap like a chair. They were huge things, you know. So these practices were to stop the fairies stealing milk. Uh, for example, three bits of coal were placed under butter to ensure the fairies couldn't get at them, and uh, also under buckets of milk. And some of these traditions are still around today. It's a little bit odd. <laughs> My grandparents were very into this. They, they had a big, strong belief uh, in the banshee, the evil fairies and these things. Uh, so yes, um, these things were very important. Um, and there were processions which stopped at north, south, east and west as well. Uh, but I think... Uh, a lot of these traditions have been lost over the years. Of course, there was poetry and uh, blessings. There were holy holy wells, which um, were, were considered uh, after Christianity came to be wells of the Virgin Mary and these things. And it all got all mixed up with Beltane. Uh, but it's very interesting yeah, and the first water drawn from a well on the 1st of May was thought to be especially lucky. Uh, morning dew as well was thought to bring good luck. And I know that uh, in Edinburgh, if I remember correctly, 
uh, morning dew from St. Arthur's seat or King Arthur's seat, is it? It's supposed to keep you young forever. Uh, the dew is sometimes collected in a jar, left in sunlight, then filtered. It was supposed to give you youthfulness, protect you from the sun. Um, and a man who washed his face with soap and water in Beltane would grow a good long beard. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, uh, going on, it says here that it was widely believed that no one should light a fire on May Day morning until they saw smoke rising from a neighbor's house. And it was bad luck to put out ashes or clothes on May Day. So some of these superstitions are still around. A birth or marriage on May Day was also thought to be really bad. Now, as a festival, Beltane had largely died out uh, by the 1970s, although some of the customs had continued generally with the older people. Um, the lighting of a community Beltane fire uh, started to come back as part of the Gallic revival. So that's very interesting. And that now they crown a local girl, Queen of the Beltane. That's quite a, quite a, a big thing in parts of Scotland. Uh, so since 1988, a Beltane Fire Festival has been held every year on the night of 30th of April on Calton Hill in Edinburgh. Uh, it's inspired by Beltane, but it's a modern celebration of summer beginning. Um, and there's also uh, an ancient farm which celebrates Beltane in the south of England in Hampshire. And the festival mixes folk influences uh, with um, a May Queen, which is a common thing. It's very old, that. And that, again, has got all mixed up with religion. And now the Virgin Mary, the Catholic Church, says is Queen of the May. So you can hear all kinds of things all mixed together. Uh, there's also Celtic storytelling. And the festival of Beltane ends with the burning of a 30 to 40 feet wicker man. Well, <laughs> I'm not sure if that's so. Maybe they've just been watching the movie Wicker Man. Um, and in Ireland as well, there's a big, big festival uh, involving fire and torchlight. Uh, so, yeah, and on top of that, uh, people who celebrate pagan uh, paganism, the religion, they also uh, celebrate uh, Beltane in some different ways. Uh, there's a group here called the Celtic Reconstructionists, and they're trying to reconstruct the ancient Celtic religion uh, to suit modern life. Oh, that's nice, isn't it? Uh, Celtic Reconstructionists celebrate Beltane when the local hawthorn trees are in bloom, and they also do the whole bonfire thing to whatever extent they can. So they're, they're really active in trying to bring things back. And there's also um, other groups such as Wiccans who are trying to bring things back as well. If you're interested, you can have a look around for more info on Celtic Reconstructionists. Uh, there's quite a few of them around. Um, it's uh, trying to reconstruct what Celtic life was like in the past. So, yeah, if you're into that kind of thing, you might find that very useful. And that's it. I just wanted to explain a bit about Beltane. There we are. See you. Bye.